Oh, c'est tellement bon ça. Hi everybody, it's Adam from Mr. Pixel. Welcome to this week's episode of Behind the Scenes. And I know you were all expecting me to go, what's up everybody? I would never do that. I would never step on the feet of my fellow Canadian, especially somebody who I love so much. With that said, before I move forward, I want to make a little announcement. And that's the fact that over the summer months, uh, I'm going to be switching up the, uh, the schedule for behind the scenes to every two weeks. So every two Mondays instead of every one week, because I have events coming up and big projects and stuff, and this is just gonna make everything a little bit more manageable. So effective today, June 4th, 2018, our next episode isn't gonna be until two weeks from today, and every two weeks after that, until things change, I'll let you know, all right? Today I wanna talk about something that, what at the beginning of my career, thought was a symptom of the fact that I just sucked as a human being, and that was demotivation. I thought I was demotivated because I wasn't responsible enough, because I didn't have enough drive, because I didn't have enough talent or energy. And I've realized after 20 plus years that, well, if I'm still in the game after 20 years, then clearly I don't lack motivation or drive because I would have given up a long time ago, right? Yet, over all of these years, I've gone through these little ups and downs, these little peaks and valleys of feeling great and feeling like crap, feeling like I can keep working endlessly every single day and other times where I feel like days, weeks pass and I just, just, uh, I just can't do it. So in certain cases, some of these obstacles require you to just come to terms with the fact that some things are just an occupational hazard and you need to find a new perspective, just coming to terms with it and finding ways of overcoming that. And the second thing is actual physical demonstrable techniques that you can use to mitigate this, to overcome these obstacles. So these are ones that I want to share with you today. So number one, you aren't using a concrete technique. This is to me the number one reason why I have students approaching me and people approaching me all the time is because they feel demotivated, they feel stressed, and they feel unproductive because they, they're not exactly sure how to paint something in the first place. They don't know what steps to take to produce a piece of artwork. And as such, they're consuming a lot of energy, a lot of calories in the figuring out what the hell they're supposed to do in the first place. And there's nothing more demotivating than having your feet floating in the air and not having yourself well grounded on the ground where you can say this, I know at least that I need to go about this way to get myself going in the right direction. So having a set technique is crucially important. And this has to do with every facet of the artistic production. Form, perspective, anatomy, value, lighting, composition, color, visual storytelling, etc. These are all techniques that we can master in order to give ourselves a set direction to help motivate. Now, the second technique might come across at first as being a contradiction to what I just said. And that is, you're not learning something new. You're not doing something new, okay? Now, this is something I really want to get my opinion in on this thing because there's two very distinct schools of thought. And you need to figure out for yourself which one of these schools of thought you fit into personally. One of the schools of thought is repetition, 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 repetition. Muscle memory, muscle memory, muscle memory. To a certain degree, yes, I do agree with that. But to me personally, when I try to adhere to that type of thought process, that type of means of finding growth, I got demotivated and exhausted and discouraged very quickly because I thought to myself, crap, after three weeks of repeating, 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 I started to feel like a machine. I started to feel like I was doing factory work. And I thought to myself, shit, if this is what it means, if this is what's required of me after three weeks to get better at art, I don't think I'm going to last 50 years, <laughs> let alone five months of this is torture. I found it torturous because I hated the idea of making artwork for the sake of throwing it in the garbage after. Instead, I come from a school of thought that I know I don't stand alone in, in that every single piece of artwork that I work on, I intend on making that my next masterpiece. It's the feeling that I know I'm not good enough yet, but I know where I'm going. It gives me somewhere to go. It gives me a goal, but a short-term goal, not this I know I'm going to be this good at art in five years from now. Nobody knows how good they're going to be at art in six months, let alone five years, right? But it gives me that almost reachable goal. I like the feeling of feeling almost incompetent for that job, but I can barely make it by. And when you overcome that obstacle, 
you get this rush of endorphins. You get this euphoric feeling that that it's almost like all of a sudden you've been you've been sailing with no wind in the middle of the ocean for two weeks and then this big gust of wind comes and just sends you flying. And I like that feeling because it drives you, it pushes you, and it gives you the sense of accomplishment. And furthermore, what you accomplish is something you want to keep. I don't have a single painting I've worked on over the last 10 years that I don't still own. I haven't discarded anything. Nothing's sitting in my work pile. Everything is sitting in my painting pile. Of course, I can look back at paintings I did 10 years and go, whoa, wow, I can do that a lot better today. Everything was a work from the heart. Nothing was just made for the sake of practice. I don't believe in that. I always believe in setting the bar a little bit out of your reach every single time you sit down a new, new work of art. And that might be a very big factor in your motivation. Another big one is too many options and not enough action. Chris, o I've quoted Chris Oatley in one of his Facebook posts years back where he said, if you subscribe to a fitness magazine and read an entire fitness magazine every single day for 365 days, will you get any better if you don't go to the gym? The answer is no, you have to work out, right? It's not about how much information you're packing into your brain, it's what you're actually doing with that information. And what I used to do, just like you, I'd go out and I'd spend like a hundred bucks on gum roads and tutorials and books and all this shit. They all sat around and collected dust for years and years and years <laughs> until maybe years later, maybe I grabbed it off the shelf and picked it up and went, oh, that's interesting. But most of them just collected dust. Instead, what I've learned to do is set a goal for myself. I want to achieve this in my painting and then going out and seeking out one piece of information, one goal, one lesson, one form of growth, not 50, but one. But with that one, I work it and work it and work it and work it and work it, work until I find growth from it. Because growth doesn't come from packing your head full of tons of information. Growth comes from mastering a single principle and finding that growth from that single principle. And then when, you're, when you've exsanguinated that for as much as you can, you grab the next one and you work on that one. And you only take on one lesson at a time. You don't take on 50 at a time. Have you ever struggled to find color harmony in your paintings? Probably because you have a Photoshop color wheel sitting there with 12.6 million options. That's not going to motivate you, that's gonna demotivate you. Instead, just grab yellow and green that day and see what you can do with those two colors. Or go for something a little bit more analogous. Go orangey yellow versus greeny yellow and see what you can do within that range of color. Just playing with the value and saturation of those colors and see what you can do with those two colors. I guarantee you, you're gonna find more motivation and more growth and you're gonna to start to understand color a whole lot better that way. So reducing your options is usually the way to go. Now the last one, and I think this is probably the biggest one of all, and this is something that played me throughout my entire career. I was somebody who grew up loving to play video games, I liked going out, I liked dancing, I liked sitting around and scratching my butt once in a while. And especially earlier on in my career, before I started getting any kind of feedback from the industry where I was, you know, where I was being recognized for my work, I was being hired or paid for my work. And even throughout my career, even when I started to find success and then I got, then I failed or I got a great job and it was a dream job and then I got sacked from that job because I was, I sucked too much to maintain that job or maybe I wasn't productive enough with my time. All of these things started to accumulate in me and started to diminish my feeling of self-worth. I started to feel extremely guilty for not being as motivated, as ambitious, as responsible, as all of my counterparts because everybody else in the world was so much more perfect and beautiful and responsible than I was. And I felt guilty and that guilt stressed me out. And when you have that kind of burden of stress sitting on your shoulders, that stress of being a failure, that stress of not being good enough, that stress of not succeeding early enough, early enough in your, in your career, when that stress builds up in you over the years, years and years and years and years, that exhausts you. And what I wanna tell you is after 20 years of having great times and having horrible times, of having times where I was making a great salary and I could buy anything I want, and having other times where I was literally going through pockets and looking at holes in the bottom of my coat pocket, seeing if I could find a couple of bucks. 
being at both of those extremes or being at periods in time when I had, when I was super productive and I was just pumping out a new painting every week and it was great stuff and I was proud of everything I was working on. And other times where I went through days, weeks, even months of nothing to show for it. I have experienced both of those in equal abundance. 20 plus years later, sitting here in front of you right now, I can tell you that it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter if you're 85 and you still haven't managed to get your career off the ground or if you're 22 and you're a huge success. It doesn't matter if you've been super responsible with every moment of every day that you've ever had or sometimes you've wasted time. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you love what you do, that you keep moving forward, and you keep making your best effort. And if you have shitty days, have some compassion for yourself. It's fine. Maybe that video game was super awesome and fun and it pulled you away from your responsibilities for a couple of weeks, but then you came back. Because that added stress of being a failure, that added stress of not being good enough, which is what's going to contribute to you not finding the same growth you could have if you just relax and said, yeah, I had a sh couple of shitty weeks, but it's fine. All right, so hopefully you've enjoyed this week's episode of Behind the Scenes. Remember, I have another one coming out in two weeks. So every two Mondays, uh, remember as well, I have my art talks every month, as well as the Brush Sauce Theater Art Contest with myself and Tyler Edlin. Free to everybody, open to the public, so definitely want to jump on that and have some fun. And with that said, I love you all. Happy painting and take care.